Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on your time zone. We have our student, Dr. Shriyas Yakali today, and a unique uh, journey he matched in his second attempt. So we wanted to discuss with him what changed between season one, season two, what were his challenges, and hopefully get you some tips. So welcome, Shriyas. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Pawan, for the kind introduction. So hey, everyone, let me introduce myself again. I'm Shreyas, and today I'm calling in from the wonderful city of Mumbai. And it's thanks to Pawan that I'm actually up at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. So, <laughs> so moving on from there, uh, I matched into my rank one. Uh, I'm a repeat, a repeat applicant, as Pawan previously mentioned. And I can't be more ecstatic um, at the top uh, that I could be. And uh, yeah, really happy. So, uh, and it's it's a university program that I matched into, and it it's re it's really been a wonderful journey. So, Shriyas, um, tell us, walk us through your journey. This was your second season. Uh, what happened in the first season, and how you improved in the second season? Right. So, let me first get into what I felt went wrong during my first season and what I improved during my second season. So in my first season, I think I applied in a very hurried fashion. So I didn't give every part of my application enough time as I should have. Uh, so the personal statement, I wrote it within a month. My CV, I wrote it literally within two weeks. And my ECFMG certification literally arrived two days before the deadline. So it was all in all to sum it up, like a very hurried process. I didn't have enough US clinical experience in internal medicine, just one month of hands-on, uh, that also in neurology. So my commitment to the speciality also didn't come out during my uh, first uh, season. So I took advice from my mentors, especially uh, from the mentors in Sati, including you. So I improved every each and every part of the application. So something that I came across uh, while talking to the Sati team is uh, what we call a strategic application. I mean, you should find a theme for yourself and build your entire application around it. So your LOS uh, talk, uh, uh, talk that about you, then your PS talks that, and then CV should back that up with facts now. And now you have more clinical experience. You I gain more clinical experience in internal medicine to show my commitment to the specialty. Did some research in the specialty to show that I'm even, even more committed. Presented a poster at a conference to show that I am at par with the residents that they have and co-presented with one of the residents also. So now they know that uh, I can be a worthy resident there. So I already know how to uh, go about conferences, look for conferences, apply with abstracts, how to do my research on my own terms, how to publish it, etc. So residency is a busy process. So no program is going to get behind you like Shreyas, you, you need to publish. It's going to be much of your own interest through which you're going to do research or anything in your residency. So program just wants a self sufficient applicant so that he, they know already that he'll be a successful resident. And that's how I wrote my application this time around. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So this is this is great, right? So the improvements from season one to season two. Uh, now everyone has had their share of challenges in the journey. So in these two seasons, what were your main challenges? So uh, I would first say not having uh, great mentors during my first application. So after I went and matched, I approached uh, everyone that I knew to uh, get some advice and they were very uh, approachable. And like, I think one of the things that I didn't do enough in my first cycle was network. And only when you network is when you get mentors. So nobody's going to come to you and feed you a spoon like Shreyas, you should uh, be doing this. You you need to go yourself, be uh, reach out to people and ask for advice. And that's when you you will get advice. Nobody's going to give advice to you without you even asking. So my advice would be ask. Ask to random people on LinkedIn, email random professors online, cold emails, reach out to your seniors in your medical college and like reach out to your dean program, uh, dream program, program director and ask him what are the tips that he would recommend so all these are just like, it's all about uh, you taking the first step. And there's enough, it's, I feel like there's a goldmine out there for 
uh, mentors and like sati included i think you guys have the platinum plan for people who feel like they de- they don't have good mentors and they can sign up with you uh, with the platinum plan and they'll be assigned a very good mentor okay so lack of networking or networking in general was your first challenge in in the season that right. you were in what were some of the other challenges that you saw either yourself or with other applicants i think uh, the other challenge that everyone faces right now also is uh, us clinical experience good inpatient uh, clinical experience in the com- in the specialty that you will be applying to so uh, i graduated uh in 2021 when uh the uh covid was at its peak the us had literally closed down its borders for indian travelers to even make it into the us so during that time i went ahead with a a tele rotation that most of us did but now that the borders are open i would encourage the applicants if they haven't graduated to apply for electives so if you have a step one score that's great you can apply to a lot more electives if you didn't have a step one score when i was applying for electives you you still have a few options but a lot less as compared to uh, when when you don't have a step one score so i would say uh, with regards to us clinical experience i think the first hurdle also uh, helps you uh, get information on us clinical experience as well so when you network you see that what these applicants did Uh, for the us clinical experience so now you know that you can actually do a rotation or an observership at this hospital that you didn't even know existed in the first place so mm-hmm. now you email that program now you get in touch with them and now all of a sudden you have a clinical experience in your hands so i think networking is also the answer to us clinical experience so get in touch with a lot of people uh, make everyone your friend like uh, just a cold email uh, everyone at mayo clinic if it, if it's a research position that that's what you're looking for so yeah that's my answer to even the us clinical experience part of it okay okay good so now let's move on and uh, you know there are applicants who will be applying this season so based on your two years of of this long journey right. uh, what would be your top tips to the applicants I think the first step that we already discussed is find a good mentor the very first step because they're going to work on your weaknesses and then strengthen your uh, the uh, strength the parts of your application that you're already good at and help you highlight them the second i would say is that find a unique thing about yourself that you can build a theme around your application so that uh, for example i really love teaching so uh and my letter writers could see that i used to uh, take medical students aside teach them a particular topic and when my letters actually came up during interviews they actually said that uh, you look like a person who loves to teach and your personal statement also says that you want to be an academic hospitalist and your cv shows experiences that you've been in teaching roles previously so that's what i meant by a strategic eras application so your letters confirm it your personal statement says that you want a future in it and your cv backs it up with facts so now everything in your application makes sense so that now even when you're uh, interviewing with uh, the interviewer he just wants to know that if what you've written is true or not and all of it everything makes sense and no red flags are ticked in the interviewer's mind whatsoever so like i think that uh, that is uh, the thing what i mean by find a unique thing about yourself that you can portray all around your application and final thing would be that sometimes uh, when uh, we are in this long journey of your assembly we we at least i went through this particular thing called delaying gratification so that i will achieve this step one score and then i will party i will th- do my step two and then i will uh, try to do this and like i i delayed my enjoyment quite a bit and that kind of made me uh, what do you what do you call lonely and like away from the world and this I can see. sometimes sometimes be a challenging journey and you don't have to do it alone so i would say that while you wait for life to happen life just passes by so be grateful for all the things that you have gotten up until now once you're grateful once you know that uh, you wanted to be here 10 years ago like you are a doctor already you are more educated than 99% of the people in your country and like you are the top 1% already and it's your top 0.1% of uh your that's your struggle right now of getting into it but until you appreciate that you are the top 1% already you won't get to that 0.01% that you're trying to achieve so i think my final advice is to be grateful 
Uh, very, very motivating and inspiring, uh, Shriya. So hopefully uh, some applicants will find good use and, and they will leverage your tips to match. So thank you very much and apologies for uh, you know keeping you awake at uh, one <laughs> <laughs> No problem, Pawan. It's always a pleasure meeting you. Thank you.